Hello, uh, I'm Steve. I'm just for you guys. I'm wearing blue glasses that match my blue shirt. So you're welcome. Um, and uh, I uh, love questions so much. All right. So this is just another picture of me without my reading glasses on. That's uh, all the stuff that uh, Charlene just already said. So moving on. Uh, the, so the first thing I want to ask, like I said, is uh, questions. If, if you have questions already coming into it, feel free, free to, or fee, to throw them uh, into the chat box. And, um, and then Charlene will let me know uh, if I've got some to answer. Okay, I'm done. No questions? No. Um, one of the things I love about business is that it's easy to start a business. Um, there are, um, th there's a lot of things that need to be done to start a business, but really kind of all there is to do is say, I'm in business and then register yourself with the Secretary of State and then uh, charge somebody some money and you're in business. There's all these uh, different aspects of business that this showing an e-business with drop shipping if you're going to do that and how to get paid and shipping. These are all things you ought to set up in your business. Um, and But the things that make a business are you, your ideas, and you're carrying them out. So anyway, there's all that stuff to starting a business, I mean, to running a business, but starting a business is actually kind of easy, um, especially if it's not a business that uh, requires a certification. Like you can't start a therapy business this way, but you can start a coaching business this way. <clears throat> uh, if you haven't really started a business before, this is really my favorite, my favorite book for you know, before you start a business. It, it is uh, uh, the E-Myth. Uh, it's actually the E-Myth Revisited. So it's a rewrite of the E-Myth by uh, Michael Gerber. So I recommend that. But uh, with all the things that, uh, all the different businesses I've been in, almost everyone has been just saying yes to someone else's request. Um, often with good results, sometimes with not so great results. So, um, in, uh, in the early 80s, um, I said uh, yes to a partner uh, to start a restaurant. And uh, it turns out this partner was really didn't have much business experience. And I honestly didn't have much ex business experience either. Um, I didn't research this partner. And it turned out that her whole point to starting a business was to impress her dad. Unfortunately, her dad was long deceased. And um, it sort of seemed too good to be true. It was one of those things that just popped up and it's like, oh my God, this is perfect. I've been thinking about this, which in this case was starting a restaurant downtown Santa Barbara. But we didn't start with enough money. Uh, we didn't believe the prevailing prices. We thought they were too high. We didn't know the laws downtown Santa Barbara, which have all these things about architectural review and what materials you can use and what you can't. And, and as a result, uh, my partner disappeared and went to Mexico uh, with the carpenter and uh, I lost everything. So that is the, I didn't just lose the restaurant, I lost everything. And I still had a car without an engine and a futon uh, to sleep on and a few pairs of clothes and, and that was it. Um, and also I learned an incredibly valuable lesson and that was uh, you are not your stuff. It's the most valuable lesson I've ever learned that I wish on nobody else. So at the same time, you can't consider every, every possible detail. You never do anything. You never start a business. You never get in a relationship. You never buy a house. You never get married. You never have kids. None of that stuff if you thought about it too hard and all the different steps. So th there's some certain chances that you have got to take. So my uh, dad uh, invited me to help with his business, which was, believe it or not, a little floppy disk drive repair business that he started out of a travel trailer that we used to vacation in in the driveway. And I, I kind of built that up to the point where he could quit his job at the university and, um, uh, and I could move on and start my own. So a year after kind of losing it all, I started a new one. That's my dear old dad and his beautiful blue eyes, of course, miss him a lot. So the thing that you really want to do if you're starting a business, whether by yourself or with someone else, and sometimes uh, there's more to do with someone else, <clears throat> and that is 
you've got to, you know, do it's very, very useful and very much more likely to lead to success if you're if you do an, a, at least a basic analysis of the market. Recall, I didn't believe the, the usual prices at restaurants downtown Santa Barbara. <clears throat> I was wrong and I suffered for that. Uh, it's very, very useful to do your research about the market, about the person you're going into business with. And, you know, just get a good view of reality. And that's what the whole idea of due diligence is. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, I started a floppy disk drive repair business. And um, that one on the left is actually an eight inch floppy drive. Can you believe they used to be that size? And now we don't even have floppy drives. So uh, I said yes to working with my dad's floppy drive business. And then I said yes to a couple of people who wanted to throw some money in with me to start my own in a different area near San Francisco. Then Bobby Brown's manager uh, came to me um, with a 10 megabyte hard drive that needed his data recovered. It had crashed, but I didn't know much about data recovery and neither did anyone else. So I had to make it up. And so I said yes to Bobby Brown's manager to uh, recover the data from his old PC uh, that uh, had all you know, the talent from Fantasy Records in it, Fantasy Records in Berkeley. So I started the first data recovery house. I hired these tiny little people. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and then uh, I said yes to basically to try in anything. People would ask me, can you do this? And I would let them know, well, no, but we can give it a whirl. This is the laptop from a Pine Grove Library in Orchid, Santa Maria area. And uh, there was a fire uh, in, the, uh, in the portable building that was their library and it burned everything up. And the, there was a, this was the computer that had all the information for the insurance company. And uh, as you can see, it looks like it came out of a volcano. The backup they had to that was a little uh, CD that was sitting in the desk drawer underneath this laptop, and it was just a puddle of reconstituted plastic. So anyway, figured out how to do that, and um, I, I didn't know that I could. I didn't know that we could, and but I said yes anyway. And um, then uh, after a few years in the business, when I was getting honestly, a little bored of doing data recovery. Another company came along, company uh, near San Francisco in Marin County, and uh, wanted to buy my business, my service line and assets. So I said, yes, I mean, they, I, I, they met a number that was good. And they actually did a better job with the data recovery business than I did. So it was kind of, it was certainly humbling. It was almost a little humiliating. But I learned so much about management. And I also got to learn about being in between management and, and the front line. And that was valuable all by itself, because before it had been a one man show. And then I got to about dozen or 15 employees. And having that middle information was really, really useful later on. And, uh, and they made me more money than I made myself. So uh, then they got a case that involved litigation, i.e. going to court, and they wanted to stay far away from court uh, for reasons that will remain unspoken. So I took on this case that involved litigation, and that led to computer forensics, which is something I've been doing for quite a few years and has put all three of my kids. My youngest son just graduated from college. So, um, you know, we, we, I was able to make a living from that. Although I didn't know when I started doing the floppy drives that it was going to lead to, you know, decades of a career. But again, it was a function of saying yes, yes to what clients wanted. Um, I said yes to nonprofits and I got to the, the nonprofit that I was already a part of and that I loved and that was doing great things, uh, had some wounds that needed to be healed. So, um, you know, I went in there with the intention of getting the harmony in the team and uh, to to we heal some of the wounds, or possibly wound some of the heals uh, that had gone before, and to get the business aspects of the house in order, and uh, and I got to do that. It was very very gratifying. I have not always succeeded, as you, <laughs> as I told you a few minutes ago, I've failed plenty and I've had plenty of successes, and um, and I'm living a 
good middle class life. <laughs> One of the reasons I have uh, not done as well as I could have otherwise is uh, the idea of doing it myself. There are, of course, dangers in having a partner uh, and uh, that kind of require you doing your due diligence about the partner and, uh, and not just being wowed by sort of people magically showing up in your life. Uh, there's, a, uh, there's a statement by Goethe about um, the, the universe moving once you've made a decision and a commitment to do something that feels like magic. But you, you need to um, put your resources together. And sometimes resources are other people. Again, uh, I guess this is me reiterating, I didn't always get it right. This is, could easily be a scene from uh, our house where we have lots and lots of dogs. But the fact of the matter is uh, sometimes I made a mess of, uh, of, of doing things because I depended mostly on myself. So um, of course, when, when things get kind of screwed up, we all have an inner critic. I would wager that most of you who are uh, in the room listening, and certainly myself, is uh, that th this is one of the biggest stopping points is uh, feeling guilty or, uh, you know, uh, cursing at yourself when you don't even, you don't even notice when you beat yourself up about things. Um, it really doesn't do any good. Um, this is um, sort of, uh, it seems like it's a paraphrase, but it's an actual quote from Thomas Edison. You know, we've heard many times how Edison failed a thousand times or 10,000 times to, uh, to uh, create a light bulb that actually worked. But uh, this quote is that he said, I haven't failed 10,000 times. I've successfully found 10,000 ways that will not work. And I love this quote. It does a lot better than this, right? It's, I have managed to find, succeed in one more way that didn't work rather than giving in to the inner critic. So one of the most important things that you can give yourself and others, but certainly yourself, is forgiveness. Um, forgiveness is, is a gift. Uh, it, it, if you forgive yourself, it, we all muck it up sometimes, uh, as I was doing this morning with the PowerPoint presentation. And it's a matter of grace. Um, grace is just something that's given just because you give it. And who better to give it to than yourself? Honestly, um, you know, grace is the thing that allows us to walk down the street and hardly ever get run over because we're living in each other's grace. So why not live in your own grace? Give yourself the grace of forgiveness. And that also helps to get you out of your own way so your business can grow and so you don't get stuck. So you can quickly move on. Uh, you can make progress. Um, Get, getting yourself out of your own way through forgiveness um, really makes a difference. So what are some other things that get in our way? Well, one is thinking small. Um, thinking small uh, and not believing in yourself, not believing you can get there from here. And, you know, at the same time, thinking small means from the other side, taking small steps. You know, they, what they say, you, you can't eat an elephant all at once. It's actually a joke. How do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? So you can think small to move forward and you can think small to get in your own way. The thinking small to move forward is, is pretty useful. So, <clears throat> oh, you know what? I forgot what else I was gonna say. Th this little thing is, you're a superhero. If you look at your superpower, you hear people say it all the time, my superpower is this or this or this. And it sounds a little trite, but it's really a useful perspective. What is your superpower? Sometimes your superpower is just getting up once you've gotten down, you know, picking yourself back up. So it, it's probably useful for you to think about what, what your superpower is. What is your contribution that maybe you haven't noticed other people don't do, don't have? <clears throat> um, so there's also this uh, common uh, conventional wisdom of following your bliss and it will all come to you. 
And uh, the fact of the matter is, like I've said before, it's not, ex it, it kind of is magic, but it's also not magic. Just saying, following your bliss uh, is, is, isn't going to bring it to you. You need to take action. So then the action that you're taking allows for the magic to happen. So the magic follows the action. So what's your bliss is, is my question. Have you ever looked into it? I, uh, uh, I think that a lot of us haven't really looked into what our bliss is. I know that I didn't for the longest time. Uh, I was just so busy uh, providing uh, and um, you know, my wife and I, when we got married, we tried, we decided, we looked over who was likely to make the most money so one of us could stay home. And what that turned out is the, the bad money manager got to go to work. <laughs> that was me. And um, so I, I forgot to look into what I wanted. I didn't know what my bliss was. And I'm still finding out, the fact of the matter is, I did start looking into it in the past just few years. And that is what actually led me to coaching. I had no idea what I wanted in life. And I was kind of all, you know, poor me about it, poor martyred me. And uh, so I, I ended up hiring a life coach. And she just asked me a few questions about what I wanted, but she asked in the right way. And I shocked, I knew what I wanted. I had no idea I knew what I wanted because I hadn't given any thought to it. So. There's a few techniques that are helpful. Just like I said, my coach, my life coach asked me questions. You can ask yourself. Um, and I think most of us are not used to this, but you can imagine yourself sitting across from you as another person and you can just ask them. It's useful to have a piece of paper and write this stuff down. But um, I realize I just held up a pen and not a piece of paper, but you get the idea. So you can ask yourself, you know, well, how much money do you want to make? What is something you enjoy doing? What is something you'd like to have? You can ask yourself these questions and then write down the answers that that imaginary self gives to you. It's not being schizoid. It's just a useful exercise. And like I said, I, I had no idea until I was asked. So you can ask yourself. And you probably had some ideas when you were younger of things you wanted to do. I, I don't know if you realize that, but those things are still accessible to you. Now, maybe they're not what you want to do. I knew I wanted to be an architect um, with Legos. Well, that's not, that's not a dream that appeals to me anymore. Architecture, not so much. But um, there are a, a number of things. Having my own business, I wanted to do when I was a kid. Um, you know, being able to travel certain places I wanted to do when I was a kid. And, I, you know, I'm getting to do those things, playing with people I wanted to do when I was a kid. So, um, so I, again, I'm going to recommend you write it down on uh, either on your keyboard or with your digital decision maker and, um, and actually come up with some of that stuff. So what I'm going to do is... I'm gonna be quiet for 30 seconds and I'm going to invite you to share in the chat uh, what you've written down. So go. Perfect timing, Steve. We <laughs> did have a question from Cece and she said, do you have a list of those questions that you can provide? <clears throat> uh, no, I don't. They're gonna be different for everyone but I'm not <laughs> trying to wimp out on the answer. Okay. Um, I will uh, come up with some and I'll send them to you, Charlene, if you don't mind. Yeah, uh, fantastic. Case. And also you can, you can send questions to me. My, uh, my email address is steve at burgessforensics.com. And, um, and you'll see that at the end. So I don't want to take up your time writing your things down. Perfect. I'll keep watching the chat. Great. So here's another thing that you can do is you can write yourself a letter. Um, and one of the, and again, you know, actually get a piece of paper or a keyboard or whatever you write with, that stick in the dirt. And then you can write yourself a letter from the future. So, 
So if you have a project or a business or something that you want or want to do or a project like a business or a project like a house, you know, my wife and I just bought a house and we wrote down the 12 got to haves and we got 10 of them. <laughs> and we got three more that I didn't even write down that were in the back of my mind. Um, and, um, and when you're writing yourself this letter from the future, it's useful to be really, really specific. Not only that, but to imagine yourself in that place. So before you imagine how to get there, which was what the easy to start a business, E-Myth Revisited, that part was about, Actually, set aside how you get there. Set aside how, uh, how you can't get there. Just create the image and the feeling of yourself. Sit there in a meditative state and imagine yourself, what does it look like? Who's around you? What are people saying? Maybe how it smells. Maybe what the desk you're sitting at looks like. Maybe what the car that you have looks like. Maybe how you look yourself. Actually create that in your mind's eye and then write it down. And that's the, that's the first step in what's called the, uh, the Merlin exercise or project design from the future. Um, if you look up on the internet, the, the Merlin exercise and project design from the future, you'll see some ways uh, to go about this. There's different uh, perspectives. I, of course, have my own. And, uh, and this is actually uh, created uh, originally uh, by NASA uh, after uh, President Kennedy said, we're gonna get to the moon by the end of the decade. Um, you know, people had to start thinking about that. And of course, the, the goal wasn't actually to get to the moon by the end of the decade, but to return some people safe from the moon by the end of the decade. So NASA, <clears throat> as part of their exercise of getting someone successfully to the moon and back by the end of the decade was to actually create that circumstance and what it looked like, and then work backward, each milestone moving backward until you get all the way back to the present. And, um, and then you're working from possibility rather than from just throwing something out there or getting overwhelmed by all the details you have, as I mentioned earlier, to get from here to there. Instead, you create milestones moving backwards from the future. So, you know, for instance, a, a house, <clears throat> you know, describing a house and then moving backwards from that house, there's like you know, getting the deposit and the loan and moving backwards from that house, there's the process of figuring out, uh, you know, where you want it to be and then, you know, looking at availability. Uh, and so, you know, maybe, maybe a, a house, getting a house is a great achievement. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's kind of unimaginable. Well, then there's probably going to be more steps getting from there to here. Um, but you can do it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So Steve, we have a few shares. Hit me. And it's perfect that you had mentioned space because Heather said she wanted to be an astronaut and she's looking forward to being able to afford a short trip to space someday. That and... is awesome. <laughs> uh, let, let me just address that. Um, yeah. I did I did too, by the way, and I've I've always been an advocate for the colonization of space. And one of the things that'll make the colonization of space possible is space hotels. And space hotels are being planned right now uh, there's a space hotel that's supposed to be up there in just a few years. Well, what if you could find a way to hitch a ride by, um, you know, working as a mechanic on one of the ships or as a cruise director type? I realized the first, um, the first people to get to go to a space hotel are going to be fabulously wealthy. And then shortly after that, they're going to be just wealthy. And then shortly after that, you know, it's something that you'll be able to save up for. But maybe you could be one of the early on people by working at the hotel because they're going to need to have staff and the staff are not going to have to be wealthy. I want you to be wealthy. CC was it. And, uh, and you won't necessarily have to wait as long as this 
dream that's way out there that might feel unachievable, you might be able to be there in five years, being part of the organization that puts it together, just as a thought. It might be your rocket scientist, you get there earlier. <laughs> yeah, and then we've got a few more. Uh, Jim's share was um, his past dreams included um, car repairs and then oil drilling. Norma's was one dream is to be a beekeeper and make products to sell with the honey and wax. And Cece would love to have a successful, luxurious wedding venue. So those are all awesome things. And uh, I can see uh, for, I apologize if it was Jim, uh, I can see picturing you, even though I don't know what you look like, I can see picturing you, uh, you know, working at the lift and it's possible to, I'm, you know, uh, you can, if you don't have the skill set already, it's achievable through online courses and uh, even YouTube videos. Uh, you know, I use, uh, I'm using a YouTube video to rebuild my old uh, 80 Goldwing cruiser motorcycle. And, uh, and what if you knew what you were going to call it? And what if you could picture your name up on and the name of the of the business, whether it's your name, auto repair, whether it's something more, you know, uh, uh, descriptive, can you picture the font on that sign? for instance, and would it be a tilt up? Would it be a, uh, would it be out in the country? Would it be in a city? There are all these things that you can see that can make the idea and the goal real for you. And then you can take the steps moving, you know, from the future back. Same with the wedding venue or really anything. So I, I'll stop there for the moment. Right, here's another interesting thing that's confronting for a lot of people. Uh, and that is, and by the way, they don't all have to be girls, uh, women. Uh, <laughs> um, ask 10 friends about you. Uh, they don't have to be best friends. They could be teachers. They could be people you're acquainted with, like Charlene um, or, or Liz, if you know Liz Christofferson. And, uh, and here's what you do. You call them up and you ask them, what shows up when I do? What qualities do I bring into a room? And then once they tell you that and you write it down, ask them, is there anything else? And um, I realize that sounds like crazy, but you might be surprised. I'm mostly, you know what people, I, this is something that, that uh, a little bit of homework I give to my coaching clients. And a lot of times they're worried like, oh my God, what are they gonna say about me? But the fact is, uh, you're almost certain to be surprised in a good way what people share with you. Um, and, um, and what you'll probably find is that people by and large think more or less the same kind of things about you. We hide that from ourselves because you know we've been um, you know we've been present at every bad thing we've ever done, <laughs> right? And sometimes we don't believe ourselves. Of course, 99.9999% of the time, you're doing just the opposite. You're doing great stuff, great things in life, at least trying to figure it out. And, and so, but because we're our own worst critic, like I mentioned before, um, you're not necessarily the best witness for yourself. So ask these other people and see what they say. Now, what I do as a coach is when you write those things down, then I'm going to whittle that down to five commonalities. And, um, and we call those your essence words. So mine, for instance, are uh, jubilance, leader, humor, heart, and creation. Those are the, the essences that my 10, or in my case, actually 13 people I asked, um, brought out as, as who they can see that I am. I have a feeling that you'll be pleasantly surprised. And if you want to email that to me, again, I'll, I'll respond to that. And uh, uh, I think you'll like it. So that's a useful exercise. So now I'm almost done. So, uh, but I've got a few more to go. So I just want to uh, see if there's anything else in the chat that people want to have addressed before I go on. 
I'm not seeing any questions, Steve, but Kathy did share that um, a dream is to teach nursery school and now to be able to travel with the money that I earn with my small business. Fantastic. And if it, if it still turns out to be a dream uh, that you want to teach nursery school, you know, schools are going begging for teachers right now. Uh, there are so many teachers not going back. There's a huge shortage of teachers uh, in nursery schools and in, uh, in public schools and uh, in private schools as well. There's plenty of news about it and it becomes easier to qualify as a teacher. My daughter-in-law, who's just about to give us our second grandson, was a, a, a preschool teacher. And, um, and she just dropped out because she's gonna have a baby. <laughs> so there's one opening for you. Um, okay, so I'll go on. Um, sometimes it, uh, life and business feels like an endless tunnel. There's my endless tunnel right there. Uh, it looks like the inside of a display. It's the, it's the blue matrix. Um, I have certainly been there many times uh, wondering what's next. Um, but the thing is that there's, well, we, we get a kind of blindness when we're caught up in the details. So I know you know the old expression, not seeing the forest for the trees. When you're caught up in all the individual doing of life and stuff and business and, um, and living, sometimes it's hard to get the long view. And, um, and in the long view, things are easier. You know, looking at these things from the future is really, really useful. Having someone help you view the context of your feelings and your worries and your concerns uh, can kind of allow you to see it in a, a broader perspective uh, rather than necessarily worrying about every detail. So that's true about feelings, that's true about life, that's true about business. So it's useful to kind of step back like this slide just says and stop problem solving. When, when I'm in the middle of uh, I mean, when I'm freaking out because I do, you know, when I'm up against a deadline or whatever, it feels like the most important thing to do is to dig in, try and solve it harder, uh, take the work home. But, you know, invariably what helps is to just step back for maybe it's 10 minutes, maybe it's for the afternoon <clears throat> and let it come to you. As a relaxed mind is a receptive mind. And so the universe can tune into your mind and you can tune into the universe and you can access that uh, magic of your unconscious and of the resources that are out there. You know, um, maybe it will rain money. And this, on the other side of it, there's, there's likely to be success, but there's definitely always going to be you. So... What's something that we should do? We should love ourselves. I mean, literally, love yourself. Loving is an action. Um, you know, there was a, a Stephen Covey book where a, a guy went to Stephen Covey and said, what do I do? I, I don't love my wife anymore. And he said, love your wife. And, and the guy said, but I'm telling you, I don't. And Stephen Covey said, loving is an action. It's not just a thing that happens to you. It's an action that you take. So take the action of loving yourself. You can, you can actually give yourself a hug if you want to. Give yourself a hug right now. Nobody else is watching. I can't see you. So I invite you to give yourself a hug and, and to love yourself. I love you. Or I wouldn't be here. And I am. So there you go. And then... Also, it's useful to surround yourself with people who tell you that you can. You know, there are plenty of naysayers in the world. There are plenty of times when people say their dreams and then, you know, the person will go, oh, you know, obviously that's a kid's dream or make fun of you for having that dream or having that thought. You know, you can get 10,000 results you weren't looking for, but successfully get results you're looking for. Surround yourself with people who tell you you can. And you know why? Because you can. That's it. Of course, room for more questions. And this is me. And um, 
that's the end of my slides. Um, Kathy did have a follow up. So uh, even though we do have a great need for child care and educators uh, here in our county, she says she doesn't think that uh, the dream of uh, teaching nursery school is going to work um, because she's 73 and she wants to travel more now. So new dreams. I highly recommend you travel now. I, uh, that nonprofit that uh, I was uh, assisting, I had stopped for about a year and then the treasurer got ill and they stopped, they asked me to step back in for a little while, but treasurer's about 73 and uh, he's not coming back. He's, he's gonna travel. And so um, that is a good idea for you, Kathy. <laughs> By the way, um, beekeeping, uh, uh, Norma mentioned beekeeping. I had a neighbor across the street who was a beekeeper. I had no idea. That's another thing that seems like it wouldn't be, I mean, take practice and you want to have clothes together that keep you from getting stung so much, but it's a, it's a learnable, it's a learnable skill and it's, it's direly needed beekeeping. Um, the, um, the honeybee in the United States is has been on a long decline for a number of years. But besides planting uh, bee type flowers, flowers that bees like, um, you know, beekeeping seems like a really honorable profession that would help the rest of us live longer and get our food pollinated. <laughs> Jim had a comment yeah. and a question. He said, excellent presentation. Thank, Thank you, you, Jim. Jim. And great idea on taking a job in space travel. He wanted to know what is in your newsletter. Well, I'll tell you what, what's in my newsletter is all the forensic stuff. Um, I'm going to be starting a new newsletter uh, uh, about coaching with uh, uh, tips and hints and um, looks like my slideshow went away with tips and hints and uh, people's experiences and so forth. So I invite you to um, subscribe to the newsletter. It's about cybersecurity, uh, privacy, um, computer forensics, data recovery, that kind of thing. And I'll invite you to uh, subscribe to my new newsletter that I can't give you the number, the name of yet. But let's see. I'll tell you what, I'm going to make it up right now on the spot. It's uh, steveburgess.coach slash, I'm writing this down because thank you, Jim. Uh, you just made me come up with it. My website is steveburgess.coach, which is not live yet. So it'll be steveburgess.coach slash subscribe. And I will commit to having that up by the end of February. Love it. You just said yes. You just demonstrated the power of yes. So Steve, I want to thank you again for uh, joining us and for all the, all the great information that you shared today. Keep saying yes, people. And if you need us, please contact us. We would be honored to work with you.